In this video, we're going to look at radiation exchange between surfaces. First, we'll look at the radiation emitted from a surface. Then, we'll look at using resistance network approach to account for this. And finally, we'll look at the net radiation exchange between surfaces and between a number of surfaces in an enclosure. To quickly review, if we have black body exchange, we can calculate the net radiation that leaves surface I that is incident on surface J by multiplying the radiosity of surface I times the area of surface I times the view factor uh, between I and J. We know that for a black surface, the radiosity is sigma Ti to the fourth, and that's because a black body absorbs all energy that is incident upon it, and therefore the emission is the only thing coming off of that surface. So Qij then is given by this expression, and Qji, of course, is Qji. can be written similarly, or the radiation that is leaving surface J and going to, to surface I with the view factor Ji and the area of surface J. And so Qji is given by a similar expression, and the net exchange between them is the difference between the two, or simply the area of surface I times Fij times sigma times the difference of the temperature to the fourth power. If we have gray surfaces, we can add the emissivity, and if the view factor is one, like a small surface to its surroundings, we can see that the net exchange is given by a similar expression here, where the view factor has, has been factored out of it. To look at having view factors between surfaces, we need to go into a little bit more detail. So let's start looking with the emission from a surface. We're going to look at opaque, gray, and diffuse surfaces. If it's opaque, it means the transmissivity is zero, and that means that the absorptivity plus the reflectivity is equal to one. And if it's gray, it means that the total hemispherical emissivity is equal to the temporal total hemispherical absorptivity, or epsilon, is equal to alpha. So the emission, that what is being emitted from surface I, can be given by the emissivity of surface I times the black body emission, sigma Ti to the fourth, or sigma times EBI, black body emission from surface I, which is at a temperature Ti. So the total radiosity is made up of that which is emitted, as well as that which is reflected. So if G is the irradiation, on surface I, GI is the irradiation onto surface I, then a certain portion of that is absorbed, and a certain portion of it is reflected. The radiosity is the sum of the emission plus the portion of the irradiation which is reflected. And the net heat transfer from that surface is simply the area of that surface times the difference between what's coming in and what's going out. So the area times the total radiosity minus the irradiation, which we can simplify further by substituting in the expression of the radiosity here, and simplify again uh, further by introducing the absorptivity for the 1 minus uh, rho, making this negative, and giving us the absorptivity instead of the reflectivity. And finally, because it's gray, the absorptivity of surface I is equal to the emissivity of surface I, and we get this expression here. Now let's expand our radiosity again. Our radiosity is, of course, the emission from the surface, epsilon i times EBI, plus the amount that's reflected, or 1 minus the amount that's absorbed, times the irradiation. We can substitute in the emissivity for the absorptivity because of the gray surface approximation, and we can rearrange this so that we get an expression for the irradiation in terms of the radiosity, the black body emission of surface i, and the emissivity of the surface. That's an expression we can put into our expression for the total heat transfer from surface I down here. So let's do that. We have our expression for the total heat transfer. We have our expression for the irradiation in terms of these variables. And so we can expand this, pulling out our emissivity. We can simplify the expression like this. And we can simplify it even further, so substituting in our irradiation into our expression for the heat transfer from surface I. We get this expression here, which we can simplify, introducing the black body emission here, and we can simplify this term as well. We can introduce a common factor to pull out this 1 minus epsilon here, and finally we can simplify it even further to get an expression that looks like the heat transfer from surface I is equal to the difference between the black body emission from surface I minus the radios radiosity of surface I with all of these constants multiplying out front. And you'll notice that we can express that by taking the inverse as the difference between the black body emission and the radiosity over this collection of constants. Well, this looks very much like what we did when we had resistance networks. 
And so that heat transfer QI we can visualize as a resistance. We have the black body emission that a surface would have if, if it were a black body emitter. And then we have this resistance before we see the radiosity from that surface, that which is the total coming out of that surface. And it's governed by this surface resistance, which is given by the expression as we see here, 1 minus epsilon over the area times epsilon. And we can see from this expression that if AI is very large relative to the other surfaces considered, if this number gets very large, the surface resistance goes to zero, and the emission from the surface is the black body emission. If this resistance goes to zero, the total heat transfer coming out from the surface is the emission of a black body. And so, like in many of those cases we've seen, where the area is very, very large, the surface behaves as if it were a black body. So we see that again in this derivation, but let's continue with the derivation. Okay, so when we put this in an enclosure, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say we have our surface I, and that's the one we're considering. We have our surface J down here, and we're going to make it an enclosure by closing these sides. So I'll call this dashed line a surface K, and this surface a, uh, this surface a surface L. So the heat transfer from surface I is equal to the area times the radiosity, that total which is leaving surface I, minus the total that's coming in, and that's all of this irradiation coming from all of these other surfaces. So we can say that this total irradiation coming in is the sum of the view factors between these other surfaces, where J goes from all the other surfaces here, times the area of those surfaces, times the radiosity coming off each of those surfaces. And we can use our reciprocity relation in order to simplify this. So we have AIGI is equal to now FIJ times AI times JJ using our reciprocity relationship. Well, that enables us to simplify this. We have an expression for AIGI, so we can substitute this into our uh, net heat transfer from the sur surface expression. And JI is just the single surface. That's the radiosity coming out of surface I. And so we can multiply that by 1 and make this equation even simpler. Let's multiply it by a special version of 1. We'll say it's the sum of all of the view factors from that surface. That's just equal to 1. So we can multiply that from here, and then we can simplify this expression further. And so we see that the heat transfer leaving surface I is equal to the sum of AI FIJ times the difference in radiosity between the surface and all of the other surfaces it's in radiation contact with. And of course, some of that QI is going to the surface J, that's QIJ. Some of it is going to K, QIK, and some of it is going to L, QIL. And the sum of all of those, of course, is the total that's leaving surface I. Well, we have now two expressions for that total heat transfer with leaving surface I. We have this one that relates where it's going to, or which surface it's in exchange with. And we have this expression that talks about the total emission from the surface and this surface resistance that we derived. We can, of course, equate those. QI is equal to each of those. And we can simplify this expression. We'll bring this term here into the denominator by taking the inverse. And of course, in having taken the inverse, it shouldn't still be here. And now we notice that we have another term that looks like a resistance. We have the difference in the radiosity between surface I and surface J over, again, constants that look like a resistance. And we can extend our resistance network model. So we saw that we had the surface resistance, 1 minus epsilon over the area times epsilon, which gave us the total heat transfer leaving surface I if it were behaving as a black body. To get to the radiosity from surface I, we go through that resistance. And now we see that we have this resistance to every other surface that is a 1 over the area of I times the view factor between I and each of those other surfaces. And that shows us that the total leaving I is partitioned into the QIJ, QIK, and QIL. And we have this nice ability to look at this in terms of a resistance network. If I simplify this expression, and I'll look just at QIJ in order to do that, what I see is that I can express this as the net heat transfer between surface I and J as the difference between the black body emission of surface I and surface J, just sigma Ti to the fourth minus sigma T uh, J to the fourth, over the sum of these resistances, the surface resistance for surface I, the surface resistance for surface J, and the view factor between surfaces I and J with its area. I can, of course, flip the direction of that. It's the QJI is the negative of QIJ, and I just see that the, we get the negative of that, and our resistances are all, of course, the same, but we've reversed the order of our potentials. It's now BJ minus BI, which, of course, will give us the negative.
And we can see again that if ai is much larger than aj, and now what I've done is I've said, let's call this our entire enclosure. Let's say this is like a two surface enclosure, and this is the whole surface i, and we're talking about it communicating with in radiation with surface j. If the area i is much, much larger than area j, then this resistance will tend towards zero because this number will be much smaller than these other numbers. And therefore, that resistance goes away and that large surface behaves like a black body. The radiosity is the black body emission, as we've seen several times. Now, in addition, if it's an enclosure like this, all of the radiation that is leaving surface J has to be incident upon surface I and vice versa. And therefore, FJI is equal to 1, and this simplifies further again. We have that the net heat transfer between surface J and I is equal to the black body emission from between J and I over the surface resistance on surface J, whose emissivity will still be important, and this area ratio, which was left over when we set the view factor to 1. Well, that can be simplified to come back to exactly the expression that we had before. So I hope you can see that with this resistance network, we can incorporate many, many different surfaces in an enclosure and do a much more complicated analysis. But of course, it does uh, simplify to the exact same relations that we've been using for the net heat transfer exchange between gray surfaces 